so I have also shared with you guys a video lecture on how I build my database. Okay? So as soon as you can, please watch that video lecture. It's probably going to be this one that I'm recording right now and that one that I'm sharing with you are probably the only two video lectures for this week. Okay, I know you guys have midterms and you have lots of tests and whatnot. So I'm just going to share with you two video lectures. In this one, I cover how to determine what tables and what fields you need in your database. And I use two different tools to create the database. I use my PHP admin, which is a web interface, to create and manipulate the database. And I also use my GUI tools, which is a standalone application. Both applications, the my PHP admin and my GUI tools, you guys have access to. My GUI tools, I am sharing with you under the software section. Here they are, my GUI tools. Doesn't require any installation. You just download it and zip, and you got it. And this video lecture tells you exactly how to run it and how to use it. Okay? And that's what I use my to create my database from scratch. Which is, by the way, what's due next Sunday. Not this Sunday, next Sunday. So tonight, I'm going to be covering exactly how you're going to be submitting that database. So... I'm going to assume that at this point you already have the database created. And I have my WAMP server up. So I am going to connect to it. Localhost. Here it is. I go into my PHP, PHP my admin. Okay. And I go into my databases. I know you guys will probably don't won't, will not have all these databases that I do. I have a tons of databases from projects from all the students. You guys will probably show up like two or three databases. And this is the how much I created from scratch on the video lecture that I share with you guys. Obviously, this is not going to be enough for what you guys have to turn in. <coughs> like my employees only has three employees and I'm asking you to create ten records per table. Okay? So I have already created that. I have already created that. And I have it under a SQL file. And that's exactly what I need you guys to turn in for your assignment, a SQL file. So how do you guys create a SQL file? You guys provide to me that SQL file. And the SQL file is nothing else than the backup of your database in structure query language, which is on its own a whole course. I don't pretend that you guys should know SQL or structured query language. That should be part of the database management uh, system course. But this is the product of creating a backup of the database. So notice that in here, I delete the database in case it exists, and then I create the database employee. And it create all these fields under it, ID being the key, auto increment, and then all the other ones, name, email, employee type, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then I insert these 10, 11 records 
into my table. Okay? All this stuff was automatically generated. Like I said, I'm not going to pretend that you guys will know how to do this. But I need it in order for me to grab your database and be able to run your application. Okay? So how do you guys provide me such a backup? Is that backup. So forgive me for starting from the end, but that's the only way I can really come up with a full created database. So let's see if that created my Timex. Yes, it is. Here it is. Here they are. Department, Employee, Payment, and Timesheet. If I go into Employee, I see all, what did I say? 11 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Eh. I'm going to put them back. All right. But this is the database that I want to make a backup of. Now, I'm going to show you how to do it on both tools, just like I show you how to create and, and insert data in my PHP admin and my GUI tools, my SQL GUI tools. Also, I'm going to show you how to do the backup. So once you look at your database, you say, yeah, it looks good. This is exactly what my database is going to look like. I go into um, timesheet, and under timesheet, I see, okay, timesheet ID 1 belongs to employee ID 2, which is uh, probably Mike Dover. The status code of this timesheet is C, which means paid, cashed. This is the day. This is the uh, department code. These are the minutes for each one of the days. And this is fake data, okay? This is fake data, but it's, f it's data that has to be related. In other words, if you put here an employee ID, 200, you better have an employee with that ID because employee ID is a foreign key here. Okay? And I explained that in the first video lecture anyway. So at this point you say, okay, I, I have my database ready. I think it's, it's, it's good enough. So I'm going to export it. And the way to export it is you can, ex you can indicate in what format you want to export it. Okay, you can you can say in a comma separated value, which you can actually read into an Excel as an Excel spreadsheet, or as an actual Excel spreadsheet, or into a Word or whatever. Now, in this case, I need SQL because I'm going to take that backup that you guys sent me, and I'm going to run it just like I did here through my SQL uh, server. And <coughs> you're going to indicate custom display all possible options okay because the quick will not have all the options that i need so you're going to select you make sure you select all the tables in your database right um make sure that you indicate structure and data which means i will be able to create your tables and populate them with the data. Make sure you add the drop table statement before I create it. This is because by the third time that you send me or by the second time that you send me the backup, I'm going to have your database, a very old version of it. So all I have to do is run it again and we'll make sure that it will drop the old version and it will create the new version. Okay. <coughs> Sync test to use when inserting data is both include the column names and insert the multiple rows. So we want to make sure that it puts both the column names and the values of those rows. And you just click go. And that's going to automatically create for you a file with the name of your database with extension SQL and you just save it. Make sure you save it in your project root folder of your project. Okay? 
So in my case, my root folder will be Timex. Once you do that, then you can zip the entire folder, and that's what you submit. Well, for for next Sunday, you don't have to do that because you probably won't have the project yet. But um, yeah, from from then on, it will be the SQL backup inside the PHP project. And if you look at it, this is it. Yeah, in Notepad, obviously. But if you look at it in in uh, Notepad, Notepad plus plus, this is what it looks like. Okay. Let me make sure that the language is. SQL and that color codes it nicely. All right. So the other tool that I like to use is the standalone MySQL GUI tools, and I have it over here. I also explain how to install it in the first video lecture and how to run the MySQL query browser which is the one that allows you to create and insert data. What I use is MySQL Administrator. If you double click on MySQL Administrator and you connect to your local host Remember, root, no password, please. Do not put a password in your MySQL. Otherwise, I will not be able to grade your stuff. <coughs> and this MySQL administrator is the one that would allow me to do a backup. Okay? So these are all my databases. You say new project. The new project is going to be Timex backup okay you're going to select the database when you click on the database and you click on the add to the backup it will go into the database and it will select automatically all the tables inside okay <coughs> Excuse me. Okay? And then you execute the backup. And it's going to be the same thing. It's going to say Timex, the name of the, data, of the database, backup, and it's going to put a timestamp of the year, month, day, time that you created that backup. And it's going to end up in SQL. And you just put it in your folder, project folder, so that it's part of the zip that you submit. Is that clear? Nobody join me tonight. Unjoin me. So that's all I have. Please watch the first video lecture because that's the one that is going to be the most important one. That tells that I go through the, in the first video lecture, I go through the actual problem statement to the list of nouns. From the list of nouns to the domain model. Through the model, I go into the database and create it. Literally, that's how the process should be. So if you don't have a clear problem statement, you're going to have an incomplete list of nouns. If you have an incomplete list of nouns, you're going to create a domain model that is not a true representation of the system that you're trying to build. If you do that and you create a database, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to create the PHP version of your website. Get it? All right, next Friday, that's when the fun starts. We're going to start with introduction to PHP. You guys are going to learn a brand new programming language. It's 
very similar to C or Java, but it has its differences. It's a really much more simplistic programming language than C and Java, I think. Much easier. And it should be fun, because that's the language that you guys are going to be using to build your entire website all over again in four weeks.